welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sue of Bend and Stretch with Sue. In today's video, I am taking you through the final chakra in our chakra journey. So this is number seven, and this one is known in Sanskrit as Sahasrara, and in English, the crown chakra. Now this chakra, as the name implies, is located at the top of the head, right at the crown, and it also is represented by um, the lotus flower, but this time there's a circle with a thousand petals around it. And interestingly enough, uh, due to its location, its element is thought. It also has um, essential oils and a crystals that are associated with this one. And the essential oils are much like the others. Uh, lavender can be used to help to unblock the chakra if, as you diffuse or even place the essential oil on pulse points on the body. And also frankincense, which is known to be a precious oil. And lime can also be used to stimulate the chakra. The crystals associated are amethyst as well as clear quartz crystals. The Sahasrara chakra is one because of its location is the top of the ladder of chakras that we've covered. So it is a seventh one and it begins, this ladder begins at the very root at the tailbone area, at the bottom of our core, and moves up through the physicality of our connection, up into the heart, which links the two, it's the gateway between the physical and our higher chakras, which are associated with our physical being. Now, as you learn more about yourself, Yoga certainly is not a religion by any means, but it does encourage one to learn more about their bodies and by taking the time to really explore this journey, perhaps moving on to meditation or just some quiet time of self-reflection and reflection of how we connect to the world around us and that may lead you to question your spirituality. Now, because of the crown chakra being at the very top of the ladder, it allows us to connect with that greater being. However, that might resonate with you. For some, you may call this greater being a source energy, for many, you may call it God, some may call it Buddha, and as for myself, I would call this connection to Jesus, being a Christian. Now, whatever brings you to this point of uh, revelation and really functioning in that higher chakra vibration, it also allows you to have a better, greater connection to those around you and to the world around you. And that really is perhaps uh, where you may discover your, your calling and your role here on earth. But when we are able to balance the chakra, we're able to then feel that greater connection and maybe be empowered to explore it further. This exploration doesn't necessarily mean that you have arrived, but rather that through your experiences, you're now able to better communicate and better share your experience and what you've learned through your own journey along the way with others. It is quite interesting that your journey through the various chakras and releasing the blockages that may exist, that you're able to then move up to this top chakra. But what happens when there's blockages here? 
for some individuals, it may be experienced as a definite sense of a denial of being a spiritual individual. It can also result for some as uh, religious extremism. Others may express blockages by being somewhat abusive of lower life forms. Symptoms without any cause or any physical cause to them can be a result of blockages here, as well as being the type of individual who is very skeptical, maybe even uh, looked upon as being narrow-minded or very stubborn. And what about when the chakra is well balanced? What does that look like? Well, for many, it can be a apparent sense of bliss and happiness. It can be manifested as a confidence of having that deeper connection with the divine and perhaps even a greater sense of oneness with others and with the world around them. As well, when in balance, this chakra can give one the sense of confidence that there is life beyond the physicality of what we're experiencing right here on Earth, as well as ultimately Samadhi, which is the enlightenment that so many seek. And that comes through that journey through the physical chakras and moving up all the way through to the crown chakra and removing those blockages along the way. Now we are all human, having a human experience, and that means we need to reconcile um, the two forces uh, that are at work here. And we really need to take the time for us as it impacts not only us, but those around us to develop and to remove those blockages along the way. So today, as we move on, I will bring you some poses that will be helpful in balancing your crown chakra. We'll be looking at a yawn pose, which is a more energetic pose, and we'll be looking at a yin pose, which is a more passive pose. So let's get started with that now as perhaps I encourage you to get a bolster. If you do not have a bolster, you could go ahead, use a couple of cushions or pillows instead. I'll link this down below in the description so that if you're interested in obtaining one of these, you can go ahead and do that. And um, you may wanna have a yoga block or two handy as well for our yawn pose. So with that, let's get started now. So moving on to our yawn pose, and today I'm going to give you a bonus pose because the second one that we do is extremely effective for releasing blockages to the crown chakra, but it's not necessarily one that is accessible to all. Therefore, I'm going to show you this first one, which is the universal pose that you see whenever there's a photograph of uh, yoga and it's really universally con communicated, uh, and that's tree pose. Now tree pose can be done against a wall, alongside a chair. You can keep your foot that is, you're playing around with the balance. Um, you can keep the toes on your mat alongside the ankle as one option, so both feet are grounded, but most of the weight is transferred onto the one leg, which is going to give you that challenge, cause you to really activate through the core and feel that energy moving up through that chakra ladder. Now, if you have a block or some sort of support, you could even um, kind of go uh, halfway between balancing completely, but still having some grounding by using your block alongside your leg. And for those of you who are not using that, you can go right ahead to bring the foot either alongside the ankle without the toes actually uh, touching the floor, you may 
bring them up a little bit higher alongside your calf and you can see how the arch of my foot wraps around beautifully here or you can move it up make sure you don't place it alongside your knee you don't want to put pressure on that joint so moving it up to your inner thigh is going to also give you a really good place to position your foot so that you've got a good fit you're able to put some pressure into your foot leg into the foot and for those of you who have been practicing for some time you may find that you can go ahead and bring the foot right up into the crease of a, your grounded hip so as you position your foot here you may find that you have to continue holding on to it and apply some pressure or maybe you're able to let go bring the hands to the heart and remain really tall make sure that you continue to breathe sometimes when people are concentrating really hard the temptation is to kind of hold the breath and really focus on what you're doing okay we want to tell our brain that all is well so we want to continue breathing perhaps you're able to bring the arms up and extend the branches paying attention not to bring the shoulders up just the arms so you want to stay nice and open through the heart take another breath here and then floating your arms back down again you can release the foot down take a moment to feel the sensation of the grounding from the soles of the feet right up through that little chakra ladder and let's repeat it on the opposite side so find the place for you to position that opposite foot bring it to where it is able to stay fairly steady if you fall out of bounds no big deal just reset try it again and do it as many times as you, as you need to if you fall out it's okay it's all about practicing and as you make your way up here if you choose to keeping the arms extended relaxing the shoulders relaxing the upper back keeping your breath nice and smooth appreciating some of the wobble which is what happens in nature as the trees blow in the breeze so take one more final breath here and use your exhale to bring the arms down and bring the foot down so that is a great way to work out some of those blockages so let's move on to that bonus yawn pose now for that bonus pose that I mentioned I would provide you with and it's not necessarily accessible to everyone it's the headstand of course being at the crown of the head that is where you're going to get some fantastic stimulation to really help you to release the blockages there so that you can move up in your ladder now there are different variations of headstands there's even tools props that you can use that will help you so that there's not a lot of pressure on the head but the idea here is to have that connection through the crown now we're not resting all of our weight on the head in this case I'll demonstrate using the forearms on the floor you can also do a tripod with having the hands grounded that's another option you can do it in the middle of the room if you are fairly new to headstand you may want to do it right up against the wall which gives you time to um, feel your way and get that sense of being upside down which can be a little bit terrifying if you're not familiar with it so if this is something you have no neck issues and this is something that you feel comfortable attempting let's get started as you bring yourself into table bringing the hands down to the mat interlacing fingers and placing the crown of the head up now as you cut the back of your head into the hands you're going to bring the elbows so that they're pretty much in line with your shoulders so that you don't want them too wide apart because that will reduce your stability and as you find that kind of flat area for the head tuck the toes under and moving up and walking yourself in to bring the hips up over top of the shoulders and the ribs now as you tuck in you can slowly make your way to extend your legs taking your time as you feel your balance and 
maintaining that strong core as you breathe here as well. Make sure you're pressing into your forearms, not your head, although the head is on the floor. Breathing smoothly and to make your way out, you can do the same thing, tucking in and making your way down. And slowly unroll, make a nice shoulder roll at the top and release. So that one is, can be a lot of fun and also very effective. So let's move on to our yin pose. Now as we move on to our yin pose, you may want to have a bolster here as I mentioned earlier or those pillows for this one. And also I feel that this particular pose, using a yin pose, is really the place that you can focus on your affirmations. Now you may go through it a little bit more quickly using them in the yawn pose, but affirmations that are really effective here would be, I am open to connection with the divine. I am open to letting go of my attachments. I'm truly grateful for all the goodness in my life. So you may want to choose one of those, or you may want to use all three of them and just repeating them as a mantra uh, as we come into the pose. Now, this is very similar to the headstand position. Although, for those of you who do have neck issues, the idea would be to use your pillows or your bolster to allow the top of the head, the crown of the head, to lightly press into the pillow or bolster. So the, the third eye chakra, would be resting on your mat and the elbows opened a little bit wider than they were in your headstand position, palms down, and simply keeping the hips elevated here. You may prefer to make it more of a child's pose and sinking the hips down should you find this uncomfortable for your knees or break some padding for the knees. You may also prefer <coughs> to bring the crown of the head right down on the mat and continuing to use your arms as a support rather than allowing too much pressure on the crown of your head. Because it is yin, we're here for a few more moments, looking at about another minute and a half here. Repeating your mantras, focusing on your breath, being well paced, not forced. And from here, slowly unrolling to make your way up. And you can take a, again a little bit of a shoulder roll. You can drop the chin to the collarbones, gently rolling the head from side to side as you make your way back. Taking a deep breath in, closing the eyes and just feeling a flood of energy moving right through and just feeling more open through the crown of the head. Feeling perhaps that sense of oneness with all. So that concludes the seven chakras and a deeper look into them. And in a few weeks, I'd like to bring to you a very final conclusion where we look at all of the chakras and bring them into a practice that you can apply. So we'll start from the root, move right up through to the crown in one practice. So with that, I'd love to thank you so much for your time today. Do be sure to consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'd love it if you did. And hit that notification bell so you'll know when I upload new content. You can check it out and check me out in 
the next video. Namaste.